school. This is lesson six for October the 11th, 2015. We're still in unit two entitled Giving Bold Testimony. Our topic for today taken from the adult quarterly is earning the right to be heard. Earning the right to be heard. Our devotional reading is taken from uh, Psalm 18 verses 20 through 30. Our background scripture is Acts chapter uh, 9 verse 19b through verses 31. And our print passage today is taken from Acts chapter 9 verses 19b through verse 31. Our key verse reads, Straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. That's Acts chapter uh, 9 verse 20. We have a few outlines today or aims that we will be talking about. Uh, number one is to recall Saul's acceptance as a Christian and the reward of his zeal in preaching about Jesus. Number two, examine the church's willingness to accept and meaningful, meaningfully include uh, in the body of Christ those whose backgrounds are perceived as being suspect and encourage their bold witness about the change in their lives. Number three, celebrate those whose lives were transformed by Jesus Christ and then become bold witnesses uh, for his cause. We have <clears throat> three outlines today that we will be talking about as well. Uh, the first one is entitled From Persecutor to Preacher. The second outline is entitled From Persecutor to Persecuted. And the third outline is entitled From Rejection to Acceptance. We certainly thank and praise God for the privilege of being able to share another word with you. Uh, from our uh, Sunday School lesson. We hope that you have been uh, studying along with us as we survey the book of Acts, uh, Luke's uh, account of things that he had investigated uh, and found to be true and subsequently uh, to write about these things. But we have uh, taken a hard look at the early church from its birth uh, back over in uh, Acts chapter 2 and we have moved along and we have been able to uh, get some insight into some of the events that took place uh, in the early church. Uh, we want to read a little bit <clears throat> of this biblical context and then we'll get into these outlines today. But we want to note that uh, we all are going through something even as believers and when you read the book of Acts and particularly what has gone on with the early church you'll find that they they were suffering uh, but yet encouraged uh, to continue their witness for Jesus Christ and uh, you know it, it's amazing uh, we continue to find uh, in the book of Acts how the Holy Spirit continued to multiply uh, or to grow the church even though they were going through uh, various tribulations and trials. But our biblical context for this lesson is as follows. Following the murder of Stephen, there was a new wave of persecution leveled against the church. This assault was masterminded and led by a Hellenist Jew, Saul, from the city of Tarsus. Chapter 8 ends with Philip's supporting the expansion of the church by preaching the good news wherever he was led. Chapter 9 begins with Saul requesting letters from the high priest authorizing him to go into the synagogues at Damascus to arrest and bring back to Jerusalem any who profess to be followers of Christ. In his spiritual blindness he did not understand the scriptures. Uh, he didn't understand the teachings about the Messiah uh, and wanted to eliminate all who preached anything contrary to his orthodox beliefs. 
upon his way to Damascus, though all of this would change after he was arrested by God and became his prisoner, and later when he became Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles. And I know that we have read the story of uh, Saul, Paul, and how he uh, persecuted uh, the early church. And and we uh, have already covered uh, the first martyr, the first Christian martyr, uh, and, and uh, uh, the believer Stephen, and how he uh, was stoned uh, for his faith. Uh, the uh, Saul was uh, present and uh, held the cloaks of those who participated in this act. So we want to keep in mind today, and we hope that you are encouraged as we try to share some things with you uh, as believers. We need to be encouraged today because uh, one of the things that we found uh, that's true even today is that if the devil can stop us from witnessing and can take away our courage and our boldness to evangelize uh, the, the word of God, then he has succeeded. And this is what uh, uh, Saul of Tarsus was all about. He wanted to, uh, these Jewish traditional beliefs uh, that he held and others held uh, of value uh, were threatened uh, by the church and its message. Uh, and this is the reason why that Saul was sent out uh, to uh, take captive those who were uh, preaching and, and teaching this gospel. This movement had to be stopped uh, for the sake of their Jewish traditions. And so uh, these Christians were scattered. They were uh, moving about. They were on the run. They knew what would happen. And they were afraid of, of Saul. They knew that if he caught up with them that they would be in trouble. But they continued on uh, uh, to share uh, the, new, the good news of Jesus Christ. And that's what we have to do in the midst of tribulation and trial. If we would just continue to remember that persecution is a part of Christianity. Uh, we're going to give you some scripture a little later on to support uh, our findings, but again, we want you to be encouraged today. So, from this first outline, from persecutor to preacher, this is uh, Acts chapter 9, verses 19b uh, through verse 22. I'm going to read this from the NIV translation. Saul spent several days with the dis uh, disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who called on this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Christ. So where we pick this lesson up today, uh, early on in Acts chapter 9, we found that uh, Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus uh, ran into Jesus Christ. And uh, he was subsequently blinded by the light shone from heaven and uh, 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 he was able to get down to where he was going and to uh, uh, become a guest at the at Ananias house and uh, but the Lord had made a quick study of him Saul and uh, the Lord had given uh, instructions to Ananias that Saul was one of his chosen and 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 Jesus went on to say that uh, don't worry about Saul he's under my control uh, uh, and I'm going to show him what he must suffer for my name's sake uh, uh, so his encounter with Jesus Christ turned and transformed him 
uh, uh, to begin preaching. And as we pick up this outline today, uh, that Saul, uh, he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. A very different uh, a turn of events here. Uh, here is a man in Saul who was persecuting the church, and now he's preaching. Now he's telling folk about Jesus Christ. Now he's sharing the good news. And, and you can imagine uh, being the, uh, 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 the tyrant that he was amongst the Christians uh, that uh, they were quite concerned. You know, this is the guy that, that used to cause a lot of trouble. Uh, but now, uh, uh, you know, he's preaching. Uh, but the text says here, Saul grew more and more powerful in the Holy Spirit. God was using this man mightily, uh, and it so much so it baffled the Jews living in Damascus. Uh, and he was proving through his knowledge. This was not, Paul was a very educated, Saul was a very educated man. He knew the law. But he did not apply it correctly. But after he ran into Jesus Christ, then he was able to understand the law. And he was able to interpret the instruction. And then he was able to prove through the scriptures uh, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. This is a beautiful illustration. But it goes on to say here in the outline that Saul's life was completely transformed by his dramatic encounter with the risen Christ. Although temporarily blinded by a light from heaven, he received spiritual sight, and the persecutor became a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. After being baptized, Saul remained among the disciples who were at Damascus. In only a few days, he was preaching in the very synagogues where he had intended to find Christians to take back to Jerusalem as prisoners. To say the least, all who witnessed his dramatic change were astonished. Literally, they were beside themselves and could not believe this was the same man who had so vehemently opposed the Christ he now preached. Undaunted by their apparent doubts, Saul openly contended with the Jews concerning Christ's messiahship and deity and left them baffled. Paul's experience teaches us two practical and applicable truths. First, never underestimate God's power to save and transform sinners. Saul, who later became Paul, testified that he considered himself to head the list of sinners because he persecuted the Lord's church. But God changed him. Second, God can use the life of one person brought to Christ to multiply the effects of his kingdom. Saul became a missionary, a theologian, an evangelist, a church planter, and a chief proponent of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is what has happened. This is, uh, uh, if we can go back to our topic, talking about earning the right, we haven't uh, quote-unquote earned anything, but if we have been granted a privilege to 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 be one of those that 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 God has called out of darkness into this marvelous light and all of us have a story you may not have been a persecutor you may not have uh, uh, been a drinker or a smoker but you were a sinner and that's what God saw and that's what he changed and that's what Jesus came to do he came to save sinners uh, uh, I, I wish we would uh, stop trifling about the types of sin and understand that this is about a nature. Uh, this transformation that, that Christ uh, did in Saul's life and that he did in your life and in my life, uh, it had to do with the nature of sin that we were born in and that we were shaped in. All of the other things that we did were just icing on the cake from being sinners. But this man... Saul was a persecutor. He was harassing and, and uh, 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 he was annoying the Christians and, and he was uh, opposing them and he was just really causing the church 
trouble and he wanted permission uh, uh, to go back and he was going to bring uh, 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 back to uh, uh, Jerusalem these folks uh, uh, and put them in prison these that uh, uh, that were serving uh, uh, the Lord but you can imagine here that uh, uh, God knew that this man had some value to the kingdom and that's what we have to understand about folk uh, that, that are sinners. And we'll share some things a little bit later on. But don't give up praying for one another. That's the point I want to make. All of us were created uh, in the image and the likeness of God. And it, what salvation does, it puts us back into that created order. It puts us back into the proper uh, order that God would want us to be in and then we you, you, you know that's what uh, Adam and Eve enjoyed the presence of God before the sin came everything was just the way God wanted it to be but sin caused another problem and so when we say that created order we want to get back to that restoration to that peace with God uh, uh, through Jesus Christ and, and Saul had a complete transformation. And, and, and let's just look at how uh, uh, it's just a few days that, that uh, 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 this man from being transformed or being uh, changed on that Damascus road. Uh, God used him mightily to be a theologian, an evangelist, a church planter, a chief proponent of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can do some good for the kingdom if we would allow Christ to save our souls. But here, the question is asked in the quarterly, what major changes would occur in your church and community if there were more members willing to boldly witness for Christ? This is what we are striving for every day. Uh, yes, we want uh, those who have given their lives to Christ to join this evangelistic mission. This is a church effort. This is not a board. This is not a few members uh, that are charged with the responsibility. This is what the church is about. Uh, uh, and so uh, we have to be bold and courageous in the face of adversity. We know we're going to be persecuted. The Bible tells us that. You know it's been appointed for us as Christians to suffer for the cause of Christ. We know through the word of God that we are not to be ashamed if we are suffering as a Christian. We understand or we should understand these things. So uh, the only thing now is are we going to continue to do what the Lord told us to do. And that's what the early church uh, was all about. So here is the uh, second outline is entitled from persecutor to persecuted this is acts chapter 9 verses 23 through 25 again from the uh, uh, NIV translation after many days had gone by the Jews conspired to kill him him being Saul but Saul learned of their plan day and night they kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him but his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. You know, I, I want to say this, all of us uh, as believers, this is nothing new for us. Uh, the devil, uh, uh, we have been told uh, through scripture what he came to do. He is a killer. He came to rob and to steal and to destroy and so this is nothing new for us as believers. We just have to understand that that's just the nature of what we do and who we are. Saul, he was persecuting the church. And, and, and as long as he was doing what the enemy wanted him to do, he was safe, so to speak. But when he turned, and all of us can go back when we first got saved that we've been fighting uh, uh, this war, this spiritual warfare. We've been going through, some of you have gone through uh, all kinds of trouble and tribulations since you've been saved. But that's a part of your walk. That's a part of who we are. And this happened to Saul. Uh, after they learned that he was genuine, 
uh, his conversion was genuine. He was saved, as the young folks say, for real. Uh, uh, the Jews uh, set him up. They conspired to kill him. And But uh, the text says here, Saul learned about it. And day and night they kept close watch by on the city gates in order uh, uh, to kill him. They were waiting for this man day and night. And that's how it is. That's how Satan is. He lurks around. Uh, 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 Peter says as a roaring lion. Seeking who he may devour. Uh, but the uh, the event uh, was, was learned uh, uh, by the... Uh, uh, by the others uh, followers and they took Saul and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the window so he could escape and we can appreciate that about God he will always make a way of escape for us if he has given you something to do there's nobody that can stop you from doing it God has someone and he will use different individuals in order that we might continue doing the work that he had called us to do. It goes on to say, Saul used his vast knowledge of the scriptures to preach Christ to the astonishment of the Jews in Damascus and aroused opposition among them. Saul, who had come to Damascus as the persecutor, had by this time become the persecuted. Following his conversion around A.D. 37, he spent some time in Damascus preaching and then went to Arabia for a period of three years. You can see that in Galatians chapter 1 verses 15 through 18. Luke's statement in verse uh, 23 after many days could refer to this time period where it is believed he spent time in the presence of the risen Christ. Refreshed and energized, Saul returned to Damascus ready to continue championing the church he had persecuted. However, he soon discovered that both the Jews and the governor un under King Aretas had plotted to kill him. Uh, I want you to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 32 uh, and verse 33. Saul the hunter had now become the hunted with no apparent escape route from the city. The city was surrounded by a wall, and the only exit was through its gates. Through divine providence, his followers located a house on the city wall to let him down through a window in a basket. Saul's life had come full circle. He, had, he was to become the continuing object of persecution for his faith ultimately becoming a prisoner in Rome. You know, this is why I said earlier that uh, we have to be encouraged uh, as believers and we give a lot out of our virtue uh, to others and we should. But that has to be put back. And that's why we have to encourage one another because no Christian is safe. No Christian is without trouble. I don't care what it looks like and what they tell you it's like, uh, but it's normal for us to be, uh, as believers, to go through things, various trials uh, and tribulations. Uh, uh, I believe it was Peter. He, he said, don't think it's strange about this fiery ordeal that has taken place in your life. Don't think it to be strange. This is a part of our walk. Uh, with Christ. But it goes on to say here, uh, the question is asked in the quarterly, what circumstances interfere with your time along with God and how can they be overcome? There are a lot of things, circumstances that interfere. Issues in the church, issues in our families, issues on the job, issues with our neighbors. There are all kinds of things that, and these are nothing but distractions uh, to take our focus away. But we have to understand, I think that's a very important question uh, that it asks here. How can they be overcome? Well, the best way to overcome uh, a situation 
uh, is to be able to understand what's going on and why it's coming in your life and to, to be able to appreciate the fact of, uh, th- that you are a Christian. Sometimes we never think about that when we're going through. We think it's, it's wrong that something is happening in our lives. But we need to entertain uh, 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 the thought that when things are going wrong in our lives that we are Christians. And this is a part of uh, 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 what we have to go through. And then we have to become people that, uh, 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 that are strategists. We have to have a plan. We have to become uh, uh, resourceful in a way that we won't let these things take over and rule in our lives. We have to learn how to rebuke the enemy and move on because we understand what he's trying to do and how he is trying to stop us. So we have to continue to persevere uh, and endure. Sometimes we can't control all of these different things, but we have to go through them. So again, that would be my take-home message after uh, uh, we are done with the Sunday School lesson, is to be encouraged. Take courage. Take heart. Know that God is, is nigh unto you. Know that he will never leave you and never forsake you. And I I speak this to myself because I go through and I'm going through things even as I speak to you. So we all need to be encouraged. But our last outline is entitled From Rejection to Acceptance. This is taken from Acts chapter 9 verses 26 through 31. Again from the NIV translation. When he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he really was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul, on his journey, had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He talked and debated with the Grecian Jews, but they tried to kill him. When the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. They sent him back home, in other words. Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace. It was strengthened and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It grew in numbers, living in the fear of the Lord. And that would be reverential fear uh, of the Lord. They honored God. They respected God. They feared God. Uh, they were in awe of God, even in the midst of what uh, what they were going through. But you can imagine uh, the disciples, uh, the apostles, uh, uh, knowing Saul's background, did not readily accept him as a true believer or a disciple of Christ because they knew his past. And that is an issue sometimes for us, even as uh, present-day believers. Uh, uh, we, When we know uh, different individuals' backgrounds, what they were, uh, and they come to us and of the Lord now and, 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 and we have a difficult time believing that they are genuine and, and, and sometimes it, it causes us not to accept them uh, as brothers and sisters and, and, I, and, I, and I, I know that that was the case if it had not been for Barnabas who stepped up and vouched for Saul and said hey this guy uh, I know about him he's okay he saw the Lord the Lord changed him you know, and, uh, and and then the other disciples, uh, they accepted him. Uh, they were they were afraid of this man because they knew uh, what he was all about. But uh, it goes on to say here he stayed with them, and he moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. And and you know, I was thinking about that and and how to help us to understand. Uh, how to recognize, and we certainly need a spiritual discernment. Uh, I would encourage you to read the first epistle of John, chapter 4. It tells us how to test the spirits or individuals to see if they are of God. We have to listen to what people say. Um, 
I also want to give you Matthew uh, chapter 7 verses 15 through 20. We have to uh, uh, watch what people do and and all of us are, are, are like that. It doesn't matter if we uh, uh, came to the Lord yesterday or we've been with the Lord for 15 or 20 years. Uh, our fruit, our works is what are, uh, are manifest to individuals and uh, believe it or not, when you gave your life to Christ and, and even when we were baptized, it was to demonstrate to the public uh, uh, that, that we are changed individuals and we have accepted the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My point is that our lives become a public record. Uh, uh, we are known in the community uh, for particular things. We are known in the church uh, for particular things. We are known on the job. Uh, for particular things. So your name goes out way before you get to where you need to go. And people do talk about who you were and, and what you are today. And they watch you very carefully. So, uh, uh, but it's, we should not be afraid of that. But we should uh, be that book that somebody needs to read. We should, uh, uh, in Matthew chapter 7 or chapter 5, helps us to understand to let our light so shine that men might see. God intended for what he did, uh, uh, he, this transformation uh, in Saul's life took uh, place on a road. It wasn't in the house. Uh, uh, it wasn't in the church. God met him on the path where he was in front of witnesses. Uh, uh, they didn't, the other witnesses, they didn't see anything, but they heard the voice of Christ. So uh, uh, God is not doing anything in the, in the back, in the corner, or in the dark. He is doing it out in the open. But uh, uh, Barnabas knew uh, uh, about Saul's conversion, and so he vouched for him uh, that he was okay, and he continued uh, uh, Saul to move about and speaking boldly. You know, when I was looking at this, and we'll, we'll move along, uh, uh, but when I read this, this topic about earning the right to be heard, I, I was thinking about what I have gone through, you know, uh, uh, that, that, that I have a right to be heard, and, and what I have suffered gives me the privilege and the opportunity. And when we have gone through uh, 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 sufferings and, and we have been uh, 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 really put through uh, the grinder if you will about Jesus Christ and we have suffered for the cause you know we, we have a very strong edge and believe it or not people know when we go through things uh, uh, and how we handle those things and so we ought to feel uh, uh, encouraged and we ought to feel bold uh, you know if you uh, have suffered and, and we're going to give you some scripture because this man uh, uh, saw Paul he went through uh, uh, and he boasted about his sufferings uh, to help folk understand that he was credible uh, that he, he was somebody that they could uh, rely upon because these things would not have happened to him if he were not a witness uh, for Jesus Christ. But I want you to look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, verses 23 through 30. And I want you to just read about the things that, uh, that Paul went through uh, as a Christian. That uh, uh, certainly if it was anyone that had the right to say anything, uh, he would be on that list based on uh, uh, what he had gone through. And so uh, that, that is something that uh, we don't take lightly. And God will allow those things to happen in your life. But they give us a lot of courage because we have survived and we have made it through. And we have and we want to share uh, a testimony about the goodness of the Lord. But it goes on to say here, Barely escaping death in Damascus, Saul journeyed to Jerusalem to attempt fellowship uh, with disciples there. Their immediate response was one of rejection, resulting from their fear and mistrust of him. They knew Saul only as a persecutor of the church. Finally, a respected follower named Barnabas took him to the apostles and vouched for him. Satisfied by Barnabas' testimony on Saul's behalf, the apostles finally accepted him. 
he remained in Jerusalem for a period of time and immediately, immediately began to witness about the risen Christ. There were the same Hellenists that Stephen had debated and who engineered his trial and subsequent death. Like Stephen, Paul's ability to debate was too much for them and they turned on him with the intent of taking his life. The church learned of this plot, so the brethren, es the brethren escorted him safely to Caesarea and sent him to his home in Tarsus. The church enjoyed a temporary respite with Saul's departure and political changes that res restricted the Jews' actions against her. The church increased in numbers as a result of the work of the Holy Spirit. If there's anybody or anyone that can cause you to grow uh, even though you're going through something, it would be the power of God through His Holy Spirit. And the church, I like this here in verse 31, after the Lord saved Saul and transformed his life, uh, uh, the church, it, just, it was a temporary uh, situation because Jesus told us this in the 14th chapter of John. He said, as long as you are in the world, you would have uh, tribulations and trials. I believe that's in the 16th chapter of John. I'm sorry, but but again, the church enjoyed a temporary uh, uh, situation of, of peace. Uh, the Lord saved Saul, and the church increased in numbers as a result of the work of the Holy Spirit. So, when we get out of one situation, you know, sometimes God will give you a little breather, and we have another test and God will give you a little breather and then you have another test. And God has a way of just developing us and bringing us to where uh, 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 he would want us to be. The church increased in numbers and that's something that, uh, that we want the church to be able to do. Uh, and I believe it's every pastor's uh, dream, if you will, that their, their numbers increase. But listen, we have to stay in this thing. We have to uh, 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 fight through these storms and uh, these attacks against the doctrine and all of these naysayers, all of these th uh, things that are coming up even now uh, that are facing the church. We have to stand our ground uh, and somebody will see our perseverance and want to be a part of that. Somebody will see that we are, are bold witnesses for Jesus Christ and they will want to follow you. Everybody... Uh, wants to talk to a witness, uh, somebody who has actually uh, seen something or heard something or knows and understands, has information. Uh, uh, and so if we can just hang on, hang in there and be encouraged and God will see us through. Uh, and that's the experience of the church. It was uh, 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 awfully resilient in, in, in even the trials and the tribulations. Sure, they had some doubts, they had some fears, they, they watched uh, someone get killed and that type of thing, but they, they hung in there, and that's what we have to do. So I thank and praise God for uh, being able to encourage you as well as to encourage myself, uh, because this, this, this word is really needed. Uh, I know there's some people in our families that uh, need to be saved, and it doesn't look like uh, God's going to save them. There's some people on the job. There's some people in the church. and There's some people that we would like to see the Lord deliver them, but he hasn't delivered them yet. But who would have thought that this man was on his way to do harm to somebody else, to the, to the church of the living God, that Jesus Christ stopped him on that road? And so that's what we have to continue to uh, pray for, that that God would move and save. Uh, uh, if you have been praying, keep praying. Uh, you have been admonishing and encouraging, keep doing it. You know, don't give up on God and don't give up on His power because He is able. Uh, uh, in just a few days of uh, Saul's transformation, there he was in the temple, not taking anybody prisoner, but preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. It doesn't get any better than that. So with that, I want to offer this closing prayer. 
Lord, you have given us the right to be your voice in a world that loves darkness more than light. Help us to use this right to bring others to you and then accept them as you have accepted us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, until such time that the Lord will permit me to share another word.